In this video, I will be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can solve questions on exact equations. But before then, let's look at a basic definition. What exactly is an exact equation? A differential equation of the form m dx plus n dy being equal to zero is said to be an exact equation if its solution is given by f of x, y is equal to c, where c is a constant such that its total derivative is given by the total derivative of f of a function is equal to partial f all over partial x multiplied by dx plus partial f all over partial y multiplied by the y. So you have this, all right? So basically, a differential equation of the form m dx plus n dy being equal to zero is an exact equation if its solution is given by f of x, y being equal to c, all right? Basically, so this is what we have. Now, we'll take some questions on exact equations and we try to solve them one after the other. So let's look at these questions on exact equation. The question here says, solve the following equations. You have equation one, 3x squared plus 3y squared dx plus 3y squared plus 6xy dy equal to zero. Question two says 2xy plus exponential y dx plus x squared plus x exponential y dy equal to zero. So how do we solve these questions? Let's take down a solution. So for this solution, right, solution here. Let me take down the first question there. 3x squared plus 3y squared dx, number one. 3x squared plus 3y squared dx, this. Okay, plus, next if I have, 3y squared plus 6xy plus 3y squared plus 6xy dy 6xy dy equal to 0. So I have this. Right, how do we solve questions of this nature? So let me give you a step-by-step -step guide on this. Now, given a, an equation in this form here, all right? The first thing you want to do is this. You'd say, let m, let m be equal to the coefficient of dx, which in this case is this one here. This is the coefficient of dx. So m is equal to coefficient of dx. That's 3x squared plus 3y squared. The next thing you want to do is to find the value of partial m all over partial y. Right, so get m, get partial m over partial y. Now to solve this, I'll simply differentiate with respect to y. There is no y here, so this becomes a constant and it's zero, so that's off. For this other one here, you can see the y here. If I differentiate three y squared, of course, the three multiplies the two here, the power multiplies three, that becomes six y subtract one, right? So it becomes two times three y squared subtract one. This is just um, the general method of differentiation. This will give you 6y to the power what there? 1, which is the same thing as what there? 6y. So in essence, if I solve that, my answer gives me 6y. So I have this as 6y. This is your first step. Your second step is to get the value of n. And to get n, all you have to do is, we'll say let n, so I'll come here, I'll say let n be equal to, now don't forget that we said n should be the coefficient of dx. That's the value of m. Now for n, n is simply the coefficient of dy. So that means in this case here, n would be equal to 3y squared. So I'm having this as, let's have this as 3y squared plus 6xy. We have this. For m, we are asked to find partial m over partial y. For n, we are asked to find partial n all over partial x, all right? So for n, you're differentiating n with respect to x. Notice that there is no x term here. So this is this is being considered a constant. And when we differentiate a constant, it gives us zero. So that's off. The next one here is that we look at this one here. 
observe for 6xy, there is an x term there. So differentiate 6xy with respect to x. That means I will take the x here, differentiate x, you have what there? 1. So I'm having 6 times 1, which is 6. 6 times y, which gives you 6y. So if I differentiate 6xy with respect to x, I will have my value as 6y. So I have this. All right, so these are like the first steps here. All right, m should be the, the coefficient of dx. Then find the m dy. Next up, n should be the coefficient of dy. Then find the n dx. So we have this. Now, when you're done with this, the next thing to do is that equate. All right, equate. Equate partial m with partial y to partial n over partial x. Now, if these two have the same value, that means a function f of x. If these two have the same value, that means a function f of x, y being equal to a constant exists. That's what it means. So let's see, do they have the same value? Well, if you look at partial m all over partial y, the value is 6y. Also, partial n over partial x, the value is 6y. Observe that they're the same thing, 6y and 6y. So what does that mean? We can now say hence, hence, a function f of xy being equal to c exists. All right, since that condition is met, that means this exists. And it exists such that, such that, such that partial f all over partial, partial f all over partial x is equal to m. All right, so note that a function such as this, f of x, y, being equal to c exists, such that if I differentiate that function with respect to x, I will get the value of what there, m. Now from this, from this particular function here, or this equation here, let's get the value of f. How do you get the value of f? Very simple. Of course, I'll move the x over here. And if I do that, I will have something that looks like partial f is equal to m partial x. So I have this. To get the value of, part, to get the value of f from here, I will integrate both sides. So integrate this and integrate this from here. Now, don't forget that in our previous classes, we said when you have integral sign and the differential sign they will cancel out so from here integral sign cancels differential sign would have that f so f would be equal to the integral of m dx okay integrate this with respect to x that's it let's get the value of f so f will be equal to the integral let's get the value of m all right what's the value of m if you look at this, the value of m is 3x squared plus 3y squared. So we have this as 3x squared plus 3y squared. We said with respect to x, so partial x. All right, look at this with, res with respect to x, as you can see here. Okay, let's integrate this with, with respect to x. What do we have? This would be equal to, if I integrate this one here, we can take them in bits. Let's start with this one here. If I integrate 3x squared, to integrate this, all I have to do is add 1 to the power and divide by what I have there. And this will give you 3 into x to the power. 2 plus 1 is 3. All over 2 plus 1 is 3. This cancels this. I'm having my value as x cubed. So if I integrate the first one, there, I'll have the value as x cubed. So this gives you x cubed. Okay. Let's integrate the second one here which is this, all right? We know very well that if I have, let's say, 3x, if, if y is equal to 3x, if I differentiate 3x, I will have that dy dx is equal to 3. So here's the catch here. If I integrate a constant term, that means a, a term here, of course, with respect to x, if I integrate a constant term, that means a term that does not have x, it gives you that term and x, as you can see here. In this other question here, if you look at the main question there, we are supposed to integrate 3y squared, this one here. Now, observe that I have 3y squared. I am to integrate this with respect to x. What do you observe here? There is no x term here. So if I'm done with my integration, what should I have? I should have 3y squared multiplying x. That's 3xy squared, right? 
So we're supposed to have 3xy squared. That means this becomes plus the integral of this with respect to x. To do that, just simply attach x there. It becomes plus 3xy squared. All right, so I have this. So you have this as your integral, okay? So from here, we'd have that f is equal to, this now gives you x cubed plus, call this x cubed plus 3xy squared. So you've gotten this one here by integrating m with respect to x. That's the integration dx. To this, we'll add something called a constant with respect to y, okay? Right, because usually when I integrate with respect to x and I'm having all of these x terms, it is possible that I have a constant with respect to y. So please note this step that after integrating this, we we'll also have to add plus a particular constant with respect to y. So you have this one here. All right, let's call this equation asterisk. All right, whenever you get to this point here, we'll call it equation asterisk. Now let's let's differentiate this with respect to y. Let's try this. Your next step is to find partial f all over partial y. And if I do that, if I differentiate x cubed with respect to y, differentiation, of course, x cubed is considered a constant because it has no y term. So this becomes a constant and it becomes zero because I'm differentiating a constant term. Next up, differentiate this term here with respect to y. If I differentiate this term with respect to y, of course, differentiate y squared here, it becomes 2y. 2y times 3x gives you 6xy, all right? So I'm having this as 6xy, so 6xy plus... Now, this is a constant, this is a particular term in terms of y, all right? So if I, if I differentiate c of y, you have c prime of y. You know, if you have that f is equal to x, or f of x per se, is equal to, let's say, x squared, the first derivative is written as f prime of x which will give you what there? 2x. So the same way you have f prime of x, when you differentiate an x function, you also get c prime of y. That's this, when you differentiate a c of y function. All right, so we have this. So here's your next step. You have these tags here. Find the value of partial f over partial y. We have this. Now, at this point here, the next thing you want to do is that you want to equate this, all right, equate equate partial f all over partial y to n. Let's try this. Let's equate partial f over partial y to n. What do we have there? When we do that, we have partial f over partial y is equal to 6xy plus c prime of y. So I'm having 6xy plus c prime of y. That's this being equal to n. Let's go back to get the value of n. From here, n is equal to 3y squared plus 6xy. So 3y squared plus 6xy. So this gives you 3y squared plus 6xy. So we are here. All right, so when you equate the differential of partial f over partial y to n, you have this. Let's get the value of c prime of y. How do we get that? Obviously, move this over here, all right? So I'm having c prime of y, it's equal to 3y squared plus this one here, plus 6xy. This moves over here now, it becomes a negative, minus 6xy. Usually at this point, terms will cancel out. So this cancels this. You have that c prime of y is equal to 3y squared. We have this. Now we want to get the value of c of y. Recall that in our function, this you had a value called c of y. How did we get c prime of y? We got c prime of y from c of y by differentiating c of y. Now, if you have a value for c prime of y, how do we get the value for c of y? We simply integrate, all right? So let's integrate. So integrating, integrating to get to get c, uh, not c prime now, to get c of y, we have that c of y is simply equal to the integral of c prime of y. Of course, with respect to y, so we'll call this uh, dy, and that's equal to the integral of 3y squared. So let's integrate this. 
If I integrate 3y squared, it becomes 3y squared. You add 1 here, so plus 1 all over the part there, 2 plus 1. And this gives you 3y2. 2 plus 1 gives you 3 all over. 2 plus 1 gives you 3. This cancels this. So the value I have here is simply equal to what there? y cubed. So it means that c of y is equal to... So we have that c of y is equal to y cubed. Let me substitute this. So finally, substitute this. Substitute this into our asterisk equation. Or substitute c of y. Let me put it this way. Into the asterisk equation. Let's go back to our asterisk equation, which is this one here. We'll have that the function, let's call this the function of x and y. Of course, there's x and there's a y term. That means the function of x and y. So the function f of x and y is equal to, what was the value there? The value here was given by x cubed plus 3xy squared. That's x cubed, x cubed plus 3 x y squared plus next thing we had the plus plus c of y all right plus c of y this value here what's the value of c of y we've gotten c of y this value here as equal to y cube so this y cube so we have this all right so we've gotten the value of the function of x and y now record that we said it's called um an exact equation or the solution should be f of x y being equal to c so when you get this your last step is to equate it to c so equating f of x y to c what do you get there we have x cube plus x cube plus 3 x y squared 3 x y squared plus y cube so plus y cube is equal to what there c so this becomes okay so this becomes the answer to the question so basically this is how we solve questions on exact equation right so you can follow this step-by-step -step guide to solve literally any question on exact equation if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button all right leave a comment in the comment tell us if you enjoyed the video don't forget to also subscribe if it's your first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please do want to subscribe, hit the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Then finally, then finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class. Get more by joining our Differential Equations channel membership or visit www.joniemanual.com slash courses and get the Differential Equations Made Easy course. Both links in video description. Get more by joining our Differential Equations channel membership or visit www.joniemanual.com slash courses and get the Differential Equations Made Easy course. Both links in video description.